Hey there, let's dive right into storm hydrographs. Hydrographs show how river discharge change over time at a particular point in a river. Increased runoff leads to a reduced lag time and greater discharge, producing a steep hydrograph because more water gets into the river channel quicker. It's really important to have a look and really totally understand the, the, the actual diagram. So if you're listening to this in podcast format, make sure you have a look at a storm hydrograph diagram. River discharge is the volume of water flowing in a river each second and is measured in cumex, which is meters cubed per second. Hydrographs show how river discharge changes at a particular point of a river. Hydrographs have the, over time, hydrographs have the following features. Peak discharge, which is the maximum discharge in a period of time. Peak rainfall, which is the maximum rainfall in a period of time. Lag time, the interval between the peak rainfall and the peak discharge. Or peak rainfall and discharge. Rising then, when the discharge is rising and falling then, when the discharge is falling. So let's just quickly recap all of that. What are the different features of hydrographs? There's a falling limb when the discharge is decreasing, the lag time, which is the interval between peak rainfall and discharge, the rising limb when discharge is increasing, peak rainfall, the maximum rainfall in the period of time, and peak discharge, the maximum discharge in the period of time. What is river discharge measured in? It's measured in cubic metres per second. Now let's have a look at the different physical factors affecting storm hydrographs. The size, shape, and drainage density. The larger the area of the river basin, the higher the peak discharge, but the longer the lag time. The more circular the catchment area shape, the shorter the lag time. Denser drainage networks transport water more efficiently, increasing the flow and peak discharge. Rock type and soil. If the rock and soil is permeable, like limestone, precipitation will be able to infiltrate and percolate, which lengthens the lag time and reduces the peak discharge. Impermeable rocks and soils like clay stop precipitation infiltrating, so surface runoff increases. Lag time is reduced and peak discharge is increased in these circumstances. If the soil is not fully saturated, if the soil is fully saturated or frozen by antecedent conditions, there will be not there will not be any infiltration leading to increased surface runoff, increasing the peak discharge. So if the soil is fully saturated or is frozen. Relief and vegetation. The steeper the catchment of the river basin, the quicker the water reaches the river, which increases peak discharge and reduces lag time. River catchments with high levels of vegetation will see high interception and evapotranspiration. Tree roots help to promote infiltration and results in catchments with more vegetation having a lower surface runoff and reduced peak discharge. Alright, lots of information there. So let's have a quick recap. Which of the following will reduce the lag time in the drainage basin? A smaller catchment area or a larger one? Correct answer is a smaller catchment area because there's less space that the water has to travel, so the lag time will get shorter. If the drainage basin is made of clay or limestone, so limestone is permeable, but clay is impermeable, and so the water won't be able to percolate if it goes over impermeable rock like clay, so therefore it will reduce the lag time because it travels faster to the river. Shallower or steep catchment area, a steep catchment area. The relief of the land, you know, the steep of the land, water flows more quickly off the surface. And a triangular or circular catchment area? Correct answer is circular catchment area. Which of the following rock types is permeable? Sandstone, clay, granite, or limestone? Limestone is a permeable rock. What are the different human factors affecting storm hydrographs then? We've done the physical, then let's have a look at the human. Urbanisation leads to an increase in the number of impermeable surfaces. So tarmac, concrete, tiles. Impermeable surfaces lead to a decrease in infiltration, an increase in surface runoff, and ultimately a reduction in the lag time. A shorter lag time means greater peak discharge. Water management. Dams and reservoirs can be used to regulate the flow of the river by storing water and choosing when to release it downstream. Abstraction of aquifers lowers groundwater levels and increases percolation and infiltration when rainfall happens. Land use. Areas that remain forested or as a natural habitat will see reduced peak discharge due to an increase in infiltration and interception of precipitation by vegetation. There will be less interception in areas that have been deforested, which will increase the peak discharge. Ploughing of agricultural fields and land increases surface runoff, which causes lag time to reduce and peak discharge to increase. So what do these human factors increase the peak discharge of storm hydrographs? Does counter-urbanisation or urbanisation? Correct answer is urbanisation. 
afforestation or deforestation? The correct answer is deforestation. Ploughing of farmland or fertilisation of farmland? The correct answer is ploughing of farmland. And let's have a look at the effects of urbanisation. This causes a decrease in infiltration, an e increase in surface runoff, and more surfaces like tarmac and concrete. 